What do you get when heroes of the world suddenly unite for a common cause that will suddenly put in prison and release on the most ridiculous standards? Well, you get the most ridiculous film by far. You get James Gunn's masterpiece of 2021, The Suicide Squad. So if you were a fan of DC during 2016, then you probably would have saw this Suicide Squad, and then five years later was beaten by Tom Cicetra, James Gunn's Suicide Squad of 2021. Welcome back to another episode of Weezy Cinema, I'm Lazy Universe, and here we're talking about James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, written and directed by Gunn himself. This is completely a worthy sequel to the original. If not, from what I've heard with people, it's better than the original. But do I think so? Well, the Suicide Squad takes place after the original Suicide Squad has done and said their job and are still working for the one and only Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. She sends them into the court of Count de Vero, I think that's what it's called, and once they're there, they realize that everything is not what it seems, and Waller's been hiding even bigger secrets than more to meet the eye. Every actor in this is superb, from John Cena, to Idris Elba, to Margot Robbie, to even frickin' <clears throat> Sylvester Stallone. And of course, somebody who I was not expecting in this film, both Nathan Fillion and Peter Capaldi. I wasn't expecting them in this film. And this feels like an actual DC movie. This feels like a very comic book style uh, movie. and. Above all, because I've already seen Spider-Man No Way Home, this film is an easy contender to be underneath No Way Home in some capacity, but I still feel that No Way Home, for me at least, is the superior uh, superhero film. But this definitely will be on my list. Uh, this is downright unapologetically gory and violent and everything. They make dick jokes, they make sex jokes, they say the F word a lot. Everything that you can think of is in this freaking movie. And it's unapologetically that way. Every character's backstory, similar to the original, is very good, except for Katana's, which I thought was very weak. But in this film, every person's backstory is explained rather well, and the person whose backstory um, actually liked a lot was not only Polka Dot Man's, but also Ratcatcher's. Uh, Ratcatcher being that the original daughter um, who watched her father OD on um, meth or cocaine, I think it was cocaine, he shot her up anyways, and he ended up dead right in front of her eyes and she, you know, took it quite hard. And that's kind of where she left her mark on the world trying to continue her father's work. Polka Dot Man is an abuse victim. His mother used to abuse him quite repeatedly um, through the course of his life. And he talked about it very much to the point where she worked at Star Labs in the DC Universe and tried to turn her kids into superheroes with all her might. And she turned her kids into superpowered beings, yes, but their superpowers would end up killing them if they didn't use them. It's a very traumatic story in that regard. I do love the introduction of Starro the Conqueror because right when Starro does show up in the film, it becomes more of like a horror movie. And I love the way how James Gunn did Starro. My only complaint with Starro the Conqueror is that he didn't talk in unison. So when people were controlled by him, they speak in unison. That's supposed to be the point. Um, but even Starro, you know, I kind of felt sorry for him because all he wanted to do was just be in space before everybody started, like, testing on him and doing all these weird experiments with him. It's really bizarre. This film is not for ages of, like, um, 13 and under. You really need to be older than 13, truth be told. There is a lot of blood and gore just unapologetically throughout this entire film. But... I have to say, one of my favorite moments is just when the movie careens itself, just to give uh, Harley Quinn a happy moment, and she destroys it herself. I won't explain how, but she herself destroys it with her boyfriend, and I have to say that both the President 
and the colonel or governor were both really, really good villains in it. I did not expect them to do anything. And if the truth be told, it is based upon not only the mythical um, story of Jürgenheim from Norse mythology, it also has to deal with a secret from World War II even, which is above all else really also damn impressive how they would manage to tie in real life with a fictional story. And I really did love that. I think James Gunn proved himself as Woody's successor for the Suicide Squad, and I really did enjoy Idris Elba as Bloodshot or Bloodsport. By all means, I didn't know he was a Superman villain until I started learning more about him in this film, and I'm like, oh, all right. You know, I thought that he was a very good villain, and Idris Elba is just an amazing actor from start to finish. This is a worthy contender film to be watching, especially after the original. But is it better than the original? In my opinion, it's a worthy successor to the original. I still like both. I might like this more than the original, but I haven't seen the original in quite some time. But I have to say it is a worthy successor. So tell me what you think. Follow me at Twitter in the link down in the description down below and vote for a movie that you want me to review next time on Lazy Cinema. So until next time, I'm Lazy Universe and I'll see you next time for another movie review here at Lazy Cinema.